Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting, Dockside. The photograph on the right was the inspiration for this painting. It's a photograph I took of a collection of small boats tied up to the dock in an east coast bay. This is the sketch I drew with a B pencil on a quarter sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. While I've indicated some of the larger shapes, there's quite a bit of detail in this sketch and it has much more detail than what I often begin my paintings with. I want to maintain a clean edge on the top of the dock. It's a nice linear white shape there. And to do that, I'm going to start by uh, applying some clear packing tape across that edge so that I can work in the top quarter of uh, my composition putting in some washes and at the same time I'm going to uh, keep a, a very clean edge on the edge of the dock. In addition to the tape to maintain the edge I'm going to take some liquid masking fluid using a fine line masking uh, pen or just a, it's a quilling bottle filled with masking fluid and I'm going to uh, mask some of the highlighted reflections that are in the, the water on the other side of this dock. So a few of the areas that I'm masking my intentions are to uh, keep it the white of the paper and, and that's what will be reflected in the water and in a few of the areas I'm masking an area so they can come back in and put a brighter tone reflecting into that area after I've put in some of the, the, the washes that I'm going to be using for my water on the other side of the dock. I've also masked some of the ropes that are hanging down and I'll mask uh, the ropes that are in various areas of a composition. One other area that I'm doing some masking is uh, where some of the ripples in the water are. So I'm taking this fine line masking pan and I'm masking off a few of these areas uh, that will remain the white of the paper once I remove the mask and, and represent some of the brighter ripples in the water. Before I begin to paint, I'm going to go through the colors that I use to accomplish this piece. Because I had such a focus on local color, I used more colors than what I often do in my paintings. I, I used cerulean blue, manganese blue, cobalt blue, royal blue, alizarin and crimson quinacridone, quinacridone rose matter, Halloween orange, raw sienna, raw umber, quinacridone gold, permanent green light, and cobalt turquoise. I'm going to begin my painting in the top quarter of my composition in the area that I have masked the edge of. And um, I'm going to paint most of this area before I remove the tape so I can maintain that clean edge and be free with my brush strokes. So the, the mixture that I'm using right now has a combination of cobalt blue, uh, quinacridone, and rose matter with a little bit of raw sienna to neutralize it just a bit. And this is just picking up some of the colors that reflect in the water. I'm using a half inch flat brush. This is a wash brush, so it's fairly soft. It's a, a silver black velvet squirrel synthetic blend. And now I'm uh, coming in with a mixture uh, that uh, I'll be using a variety of blues as I paint this. Uh, they include royal blue, cobalt blue, and cerulean blue. And with those I'll be putting in uh, a little bit of uh, raw sienna to uh, again kind of dampen the color just a little bit, take it down and, and neutralize it just a little bit. I switched to a one inch brush uh, to paint a lot of this area. I don't like um, working with a, a brush that's much smaller than the area that I'm trying to cover. I always try to use a larger brush where I can and it gives me nice fresh brush strokes. Here the blue I'm applying has a little bit more cobalt blue in it than what I used on the left side. Here 
Here I'm coming in with a mixture that has some raw umber with a little alizarin crimson and some have uh, part, part of what I'm applying also has a little bit of royal blue in it to cool it down a little. And actually this area I'm painting right now has a touch of sap green which is a color that I didn't, didn't list earlier in the video. But this is about the only place that I used it, just a touch of green that was being picked up in the, the photograph. And uh, I'll be using just uh, some various combinations here with uh, the raw umber and uh, either alizarin to have a warm mixture or royal blue to cool it down just a little bit. And you can see it's very dark and I'm applying it. Uh, in an area right now that's uh, wet on wet. I, I started wet on dry, which is often how I do a lot of my painting. Um, but at the moment, the, this paint, the, the paper is still very wet where I'm applying this. So it starts to diffuse and, and gives you know, softer edges. And here I'm making some more of these uh, marks, horizontal marks with this very dark value and they're fairly soft. I'll come back a little bit later uh, working wet and dry and sharpen up some of these edges. I thoroughly dried my paper and now I'm going to take a, a damp nylon brush. It's a flat nylon brush about uh, three quarters of an inch and I'm going to do some lifting into some of these darker values that I've put down just to indicate some of the reflections. Uh, some of uh, the marks are uh, horizontal to, to uh, give the feeling of the rippling of the water and some other ones are going to be a little bit more uh, vertical. Here I'm just going to lift some, ver uh, put some vertical marks in these um, to indicate reflections and I'll break those up a little bit as I paint uh, with some also some horizontal brush strokes. And you can see, as I'm moving across here, some of the lifting I'm doing uh, to give the indication of reflection. Here I'm going to take the half inch flat brush and I'm going to use a mixture of royal blue with some raw umber and uh, Sometimes it'll have a little touch of cobalt blue in it as I paint this. But now I'm working wet on dry again, so I'm getting uh, sharper edges. And I'm painting over top of the, the, the washes that I put down before that have some softer edges because I was working wet and wet. So I like that combination. It gives some of that diffused color, but also gives some uh, very well-defined, sharp, hard edges that you would see in the reflections of the water and the ripples of the water. So I'm taking this to the other side of my composition. I'm going up to the top, going to the bottom. You want to make sure when you're when you're painting something like this that you take it all the way to the edge. You don't want it just to appear like these are shapes floating in the middle of your composition. These would uh, reach out and connect uh, to the edges of your composition. I'm continuing to work with a half inch brush working wet on dry and the mixture I'm using is darker than the one that I was uh, just using. It's combinations of royal blue, raw umber, uh, some with alizarin and crimson, but you can see that I'm uh, making uh, narrow brush marks with the with the edge of the flat brush, and uh, giving the indication of reflections and ripples uh, with the the pattern that I'm applying these brush marks. I continue with some of the uh, with the same value and the same mixture and I'm taking uh, these dark valued brush marks to the other side here and uh, 
uh, they they represent some of these dark reflections that are coming down on the water. And as I'm putting these in, I'm going, and it's hard to, to see it, but I'm going over top of these uh, linear marks that I masked prior to painting to represent uh, the ropes. And uh, right in the middle uh, of the two of the two ropes, where just to the left of where I'm painting right now, is the mast from the boat. And I should have masked that area off. And I lost track when I started painting over it. So what I'm going to do is later in my painting process, when the time is right, I'm going to put some tape on either side of that, uh, the pull of that mast, and I'm going to use uh, a uh, magic eraser sponge, and I'll, I'll lift off the paint there that I've applied in that area, and uh, then I'll, I'll put a wash on it so that it represents the mast of the boat. Here I'm going to take a, a royal blue mixture that has some raw umber in it, um, but it's still on the blue side. And I'm going to uh, darken the values of the water, primarily on the left side of the page here. Now I've dried the area uh, above the tape and I'm going to pull that tape off and you can see that I've been able to maintain a clean edge there uh, on the edge of the dock where I wanted it. Now that I've removed the packing tape that I was using as a frisket, I'm going to continue masking with liquid mask on the lower three quarters of my composition. So I'll continue uh, the, the ropes that I had masked above, I'll continue those down, masking those. And I'll get the highlights, areas where I want to preserve some very fine lines uh, to be very light or white. You can paint around these, but sometimes it's, it's much easier to uh, just use a little white mask ahead of time before you paint. And that way you don't have to worry about losing the whites in areas that you, you want to preserve and I try to identify these in advance and use some masking to uh, preserve those whites and I don't have to worry about um, an errant brush stroke that covers an area up that I want it to be light. Here I'm picking up uh, the reflection of the ropes as they, they reflect down into the water. So I'm applying the liquid masks there. And I want to maintain a clean edge also on the lower uh, part of the shape that I had masked previously with the tape to keep the clean edge from the water. Um, so I'm carefully going to take some uh, pieces of tape that are cut to length uh, in between uh, some of the shapes that are in the composition uh, and I'm just going to smooth the one edge of the tape because I don't want it to pick up some of the masking fluid in some of the areas above um, so I'm careful when I apply the, the tape and I'm, I'm just going to have it there long enough to uh, paint the area right below this tape uh, that is part of the dock and it'll, it'll, this will help me, again, maintain a clean edge on that nice white shape. Now I'm going to paint uh, this wood tone that uh, is on the edge of this uh, white shape here that I've masked off. So I'm using a combination of quinacrid and uh, gold a little raw sienna, some cerulean blue, and um, I'm just painting the edge of this dock. And I'm going to take this all the way across and dry it, and then I'm going to remove that packing tape. Just again, my whole reason for doing that is I wanted to maintain a nice clean edge on uh, this uh, top surface of the dock.
I've painted that shape going across and I've been alternating the mixture a little bit from the, the quinacrid and gold raw sienna to a mixture that has a little bit of cerulean blue in it so going a little bit from back and forth between warm and cool as I painted that wash going across and now I'm going to paint some of the of this larger area uh, with this same tone. Here I'm painting this larger shape and uh, I apply the warm mixture and then uh, I come in where well, the paper's still wet and I'm bringing in a, a, a little bit darker, cooler mixture which uh, has some pie, uh, royal blue in it. And um, I'm going to do the same in, in just a few little areas here where I need a dark value. Here I'm going to paint the back of the uh, boat here on the left with uh, a lighter mixture of quinacrid and gold so I've added some more water to this mixture and uh, as I paint this I'm still going to uh, alternate a little bit between warm and cool so I'll use this this lighter quinacrid and gold mixture but I'll also take a little bit of it that I've mixed in some cerulean blue here as you can see it's cooler and I just uh, add it uh, as to, to the wash as I continue to fill the shape. I've dried it and I'm removing the the few pieces of packing tape that I had there again to maintain a clean edge on the top surface of that dock area. Now I'm taking some of the same warm mixture and I'm uh, painting the edge of the, this particular boat. So it's a, a wood molding that goes around it. And here I'm getting the other side of that same boat using the same combinations of color. For a lot of this brush work I'm using a number four uh, sable brush. It's just a general purpose round sable and again it's size four but I'll switch off and on between a number of my flats and my rounds uh, throughout the painting. Now I'm going to begin putting a wash into the, the lower area of my composition where this water is. And it's much lighter than the, the water on the other side of the dock. And I'm using manganese blue, which has a, uh, is a bit more blue-green than cerulean or some of the cobalt um, blues that I've used. So I'm, I'm making these brush strokes horizontally to... Uh, represent the, the the ripples of the water, the reflections of the water. So now I'm going to paint the back of this boat and once again I'm using some manganese. I'm also going to put in a little bit of cerulean blue in a few spots and then I'll warm it up in some areas using some raw sienna. So once again I'll be using combinations of warm and cool. Here I've introduced uh, some cerulean, which doesn't quite have the green, uh, as much a green cast as the manganese. And uh, I'll also offset this a little bit with uh, some, some warm tones here, with a little bit of raw sienna mixed in.
here I'm painting the reflection of the back of the boat and it's going to be going to be a little bit darker and uh, not quite as intense in terms of uh, the color it's going to be toned down a little bit more more neutral I've painted this shape but I want it to be a little darker so I'm going to go back over it with just a little bit darker uh, wash Here I'm going to begin to paint the uh, side of this boat and it's picking up a blue tone but I'm painting a, a little uh, cooler and bluer than uh, the back of the boat. So for this I'm using some cerulean blue and then I'm going to work in some warm tones using some raw sienna. So once again, here I'm using a combination of warm and cool colors. And I'm going to take uh, some raw umber and, and put in here. And I'm going to take that uh, darker tone a little farther back here to the, the underside of uh, the, the boat. Here I've inserted the uh, photograph in the top right corner and you can see some of those blue tones on the boat and now I'm painting uh, some of the dark uh, area underneath this boat where it's shadowed by the boat and it starts to transition though into the reflection of the boat. Normally the lighter objects reflect darker into the water and darker objects reflect somewhat lighter. This dark mixture that I applied is a combination of raw umber, a little alizarin in it, and then uh, a mixture that has those two colors but also has some royal blue added to it. And then I start to add uh, a little cerulean blue, a little cobalt blue, and uh, I gradate that, that wash down and let it transition into the reflection. So there's a, there's a transition happening there from the, the dark shadow into the reflection of the boat. And as I start to get that reflection in, I also pick up a few areas where there's some uh, warmer tones that are reflecting down from uh, the edge of the boat. So right here around the, uh, where the ropes are also reflecting down, I have a few warm touches of warm tone. So those, those ropes that are, are reflections in the water, I've masked. So um, those show up as a light tone once I remove that masking. And these warm tones are kind of reflecting from the boat. So now I'm taking some of that, that same dark tone close to the front uh, on the side of this boat and uh, this dark wash um, creates a, a pocket of shadow between these two boats here. The, the, the back end here of this uh, powered rubber raft type boat um, has this dark, dark tone that's wrapping around the the round shape of the the back end of that boat. Now 
Next, I'm going to paint this very uh, large dark shape that's created by the the dark side of this uh, this bow, which is a almost a navy blue, and its reflection down into the water, along with the shadows that are created by the the boat and uh, the space between the other boats. So this becomes a very large dark shape. And uh, as I paint this dark shape, the the edges of the shape itself are um, irregular because it's uh, the, uh, the the dark shape transitions down into the reflections into the water, and it's picking up the reflection of the boat and the the dark side of the the boat on the left, and that creates some irregular edges irregular edges along that. So I've stayed with a small round brush as I paint this because I'm, I want to uh, pick up that irregularity uh, of some of these edges as it reflects down into the water. However, I probably could have uh, moved to a, a larger brush to paint this area. I don't like the labor uh, when painting a big shape like this, if it, especially if it's more of a solid tone or even if it has variation in it. Normally, I transition to a, a larger brush, um, but I'm sticking with a smaller one so that I can get some of these uh, kind of sharp edges as I paint the, the reflection of this dark shape into the water. As I paint some of these uh, darker kind of linear shapes that uh, uh, are the result of the ripples in the water and some of the reflections that are coming down the dark reflections and just some just where the, the way the lights hitting I've switched to a uh, a brush that I like to use that has a has a nice sharp point this is a uh, I was using a number four sable um, and now I've switched to a uh, synthetic sable by Princeton. It's an Aqua Elite series. And this is a size 4 also, size 4 round brush, but it has a sharper point than my sable. Um, it holds a fair amount of water, um, but it, it maintains a pretty nice point, so uh, it's a nice brush to, to use to get these ripples in the water. There's a dark shadowed area here uh, created in between these uh, two boats and just under the edge of the dock. So I'm just going to paint that dark value in there. I'm going to take that dark mixture and paint the, uh, the edge of the boat here on the back. There's a, like a, a dark trim on it and I'm actually using a mixture that's uh, raw umber and alizarin crimson it's a little warmer than some of the other dark value I was just painting with but it's uh, a little hard to to, uh, to see that in the video but there is some warm and cool going on within this warm or within this very dark value I'm going to take a, a fairly dark value here and I'm going to uh, put a dark tone just underneath the edge of uh, this boat so it has a molding that goes down the, the side there on the top and it casts a bit of a shadow below it. So I've, I've taken one, one of these dark mixtures, put it on the underside of this trim, and then I've taken some clear water and softened that edge to, to let it transition down uh, the side of this boat and just make it so that it feels like it's in shadow. So I put a little bit more of that. This is a warmer tone here and uh, just soften that and then I'm going to take that back towards the edge. And this mixture that I'm using right now is uh, 
some cerulean blue with some Halloween orange in it. So those two uh, are on opposite sides of the color wheel and they create a nice neutral. Here I'm going back to the, the boat on the left here and there, there's a strip here on the side that has a, a, a rich warm tone to it. Um, so I'm using a combination of uh, quinacridone gold and some quinacridone rose matter and uh, I'll vary the ratios of that as I put this wash down. And I'll also put some touches of uh, cerulean blue in it to give uh, some cool tones in a few areas. But trying to, to give the, the suggestion of a rich wood tone. And there'll be a few breaks here in this, this wash where there's some reflective light here and it lightens up. So I'll leave a few breaks here. And then uh, as I get towards the front of this, this strip here, a uh, strip of wood on the side of this boat, uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm mixing in a little cerulean blue here to just to cool that mixture down a little bit and make it feel a little bit more shadowed. And then here I'm taking some clear water and I'm softening the edges of that. I'm gonna try and leave that bit of reflection and it actually, uh, there's a the sail in the boat beside it is a is a teal color, and that boat is picking up some reflective light from that teal. So I'm gonna in that light area, I'm gonna come in later and drop in uh, kind of a teal color. So here I've moved on to uh, painting uh, the inside of this boat, which is kind of a shadowed, and I have kind of a purple tone to start. So I'm using cobalt blue and quinacridone rose matter as I paint uh, this area, start to paint that area. And then I'm transitioning to a cerulean blue. Now I'm gonna to start to paint the, the, this rolled up canvas in this boat, which I suppose is a sail. And I'm using a combination of uh, violet, blue violet, red violet, uh, using quinacridone rose matter and some cobalt blue. Uh, and then I'll also bring in some warm tones that I've been using with the uh, quinacridone gold and rose matter. And uh, just uh, kind of painting right now the shadowed side of that roll of canvas. And here I'm going to bring in some touches of that warm uh, gold tone. Now I'm going to paint the reflection of the back of that boat, which is going to be darker than the actual back itself. Uh, so I'm using a mixture here that has some uh, Halloween orange and cerulean blue. So it's a it's a kind of a, a warm uh, middle value uh, neutral tone. So I'm, I'm taking a wash here that's just uh, kind of filling in this shape here uh, created by the shadowed area that I painted. And I vary the ratio of these uh, colors, these two colors, the Halloween orange and the cerulean blue, to give me warmer and cooler versions of this mixture. And as I bring it down, it starts to break into the ripples of the water. So I'm using my round brush and uh, making some brush marks that describe uh, the ripples of the water and it takes this color into it. And then as I uh, get to these ripples with some sharper uh, 
uh, smaller edges. I'm, I've switched back to the uh, synthetic sable that I'm using, the Aqua Elite brush, to paint some of these. And now I've taken I'm, I'm taking a mixture here that is a kind of a neutral violet tone. So I've taken some cobalt blue, some rose matter quinacridone, mixed it together, then added a little bit of raw sienna to neutralize it a little bit. So it gives me this kind of warm, purpley neutral. And I'm, I'm painting uh, within these ripples uh, with this tone. So, so some of the ripples in the water, they, they don't always show is, is just dark, dark and light. There's some, uh, some middle value uh, gradation or changes in color that, that also occur along with some of the, the lighter value ripples in the water. This shape here that I've painted as a reflection, I want it to be uh, a, a bit darker, so I'm going to glaze over that with a little bit of a darker middle value tone. It actually has a little bit more red in it, so it's leaning more towards violet than blue. I'm taking a uh, violet tone here and I'm uh, just giving an indication of some of the the detail on this boat just uh, just slight touches of a darker value to indicate where some of the structure of this boat is and the shadowed areas that are created by that there's also some some lines here that follow the contour of that boat that, that, that are created by the planks uh, that make up the boat. I'm taking a dark value and just painting uh, some of the details on the boat here on the back. Yeah, some hardware. And uh, these these two small round shapes that have some masking in the middle of them uh, where I protected the white of the paper to pick up a bright uh, a light reflection and just a touch of value here to darken up these features on the boat now here I'm going to add to the to the wash that I've put on this dock area. So I want to deepen the value of that a little bit. I'm still using a pretty rich tone here that has mixtures of quinacridone and gold and uh, rose matter quinacridone, but uh, you could use a, a burnt sienna combination here. Uh, just something to give you a nice warm, rich wood tone. And I'm also, some of these brush strokes, I'm giving the indication of the grain in the wood. I'm going to carry those uh, those values down here on this dock, and I'm going to create again some of those the the, suge the suggestion of some grain in the wood. Now I'm taking a uh, a, a neutral gray tone that has uh, a little bit of a violet tone to it and I'm going to uh, paint the reflection of the uh, the mast of the boat and if you recall towards the top there there's an area there that I really should have masked to, to save that area uh, that is the mast and I'll be lifting out that area a little bit later. Uh, but this is the reflection created by that as it comes down in the water. So I'm bringing it down as a vertical shape, but it has a lot of irregularity to it because that uh, reflection is being broken up by the rippling in the water. Now 
Now I'm going to start to paint the inside of this boat, which has a, a teal sail laying in it. And that uh, teal is picked up in a reflective light on the, in the inside of this boat. So to create that teal color, I'm going to be using cobalt turquoise uh, mixed with permanent green light. And I'll be using those in combination. And on the reflective light here on the boat, I'm also using some manganese blue in some areas. So this area right here is manganese blue that I'm coming in with a cooler tone here, a little violet tone towards the end as it gets away from the, uh, the sail. But more towards the, the left side of that area of that wash is, is leaning more towards a teal and manganese blue. Here I'm using the cobalt turquoise and the permanent green light combination to put a wash over this sail. And uh, the top edge is going to be a little lighter than uh, the rest of the, the shape. Um, but it's not, it's not going to be white, it's just a lighter uh, teal color. So right now I'm just glazing over this shape with this wash and then I'm going to come back uh, with some darker values and put in some of the folds and pockets of shadow on this rolled up sail. And there I'm going to blot it to lighten the edge a little bit. Here I'm going to uh, paint some of the trim here on the edge of the boat using a uh, kind of a, a violet, red violet tone and uh, just follow the edge of that trim around and a few areas it's leaning a little bit towards neutral or I've added some raw sienna. I'm going to take that up towards the front there and get it at a, a little darker value. So I, I paint the edge as it bends around the front. Here I'm uh, picking up some of the reflection of the, of the back of this kind of raft-like boat. So this is a violet tone that I have. Most of my violet tones that I'm using are mixtures of cobalt blue, quinacridone rose matter, and then I put in touches of raw sienna as I, as I see fit to drive it towards neutral. So sometimes it's more of a pure uh, violet, red violet, blue violet using those two colors. And then when I want to drive it towards neutral, I add a little bit of raw sienna. Now I want to darken that, this pocket in between the, these boats. Um, so I'm coming in with a much darker value. And I need to achieve some, some gradation of that color. So the mixture I'm putting down right now is, is, uh, has quite a bit of moisture in it. So it's very dark value, but it has a lot of pigment floating in it. Um, and so I'm, I'm applying this mixture with the brush and then I'm going to come in with a, a fine mist spray and I'm going to soften the edge of this little bit and diffuse this color. So it's hard to pick up but it's, it's a, that's a very moist mixture that I put down and now I'm coming in with this fine mist spray and I'm softening the edges and diffusing that dark value. When you, when you use that spray sometimes you get some excess water floating around so I blot that up with a tissue but I'm also going to take that value that dark value mixture and I'm going to put some of that towards the back of the boat here and um, so I'm keeping a sharp edge on the uh, on the edge of the reflection in the boat then I'm softening that as it goes down into the water to give a kind of a soft gradation of that value.
taking some of that dark value and uh, contouring the, the, the round shape of this raft here and uh, I'm, I'm given the indication of that is in its reflection in the water and then uh, some of the marks uh, on the boat itself so this the sides of this uh, this boat are very cylindrical and they almost come to a cone in the back on either side so just by using line to give the indication of these they don't have to do a whole lot of brushwork here just make some some linear marks using line to give the indication of this this form in some of the uh, uh, values that appear with the hardware and whatnot that's on this boat so that's enough just to, to describe uh, that that shape and then I've got a dark value here that I'm painting in between these two boats and where they come up to the dock Now here, um, there's an edge on the, the, the dock here that is like a, a kind of a red-violet tone, still fairly neutral. And so I'm putting that in right now. And then um, I want to go, I still want to go darker uh, on this area of the dock here on the side of this boat. So I'm coming in with a darker mixture and um, making that area more uh, shadowed. So I put the dark value in there and right along those edges and start to feather it out. Now I've started to bring in just some clear water, but it's still a fairly rich mixture, um, but it's dark in that area of the dock. Here I'm coming in with a, a darker mixture of this uh, teal color. So this is still using cobalt turquoise and some permanent green light, uh, a richer mixture. And uh, to get even some, some darker values and actually some bluer tones, I'll mix in some cobalt blue and some royal blue to give me some variation in the color that I'm painting this sail. So here I'm uh, giving the indication of the the folds in this this sail that's laying in this boat. So just uh, using a variety of mixtures here with a, just a few colors here, but just getting some some darker values of this teal tone. And now I want to go much darker, so I've added some royal blue to my mixture to give me this dark value. And I'm just uh, making some selective brush strokes to give the suggestion of these creases in this canvas. Some of these brush strokes give the indication of the kind of the folds in this canvas that's laying there. Then a, a few of my brush marks here kind of contour the round shape of that roll. So it's a combination of folds and then the, 
the contours that are created by the uh, the rolling of this canvas. There's a bag or something uh, laying in this uh, boat, so I'm just taking a, a red here. In this case, it's rose matter quinacridone, and just give an indication of that that bag laying in the boat. Next, I'm going to take my uh, pickup eraser and I'm going to lift the masking that I put down at the start of my process. So if you recall, most of the masking I did was just to preserve the white on some of the edges and the highlights and areas where there's rope. And then I also uh, put some of that masking uh, to protect some of the areas where, that, where there's a light reflecting into the water. Now there's a mast in this boat that I should have masked off at the beginning when I was masking off the rope. So I, I just went in and I painted over that area. I lost track of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking some clear packing tape and I'm going to put it on either ed on either side of this the, the mask, the pole that says the mask. And then I'm going to take a, a damp a magic eraser which is a kind of a cleaning sponge and I'm going to lift off that uh, shape to, to give the indication of the the pole the, the mass that's here in this boat and um, I'm going to put a, a piece of plastic here at the base of this so that I uh, don't uh, lift areas that I don't want below that that shape so I'm using a uh, small piece of a magic eraser that I cut off a full-size sponge and it's very damp. Uh, it's not dripping but it's a, a very damp uh, sponge and I'm just rubbing it gently and it lifts the, the pigment. I blot it with a tissue and it does a pretty good job of lifting pigment off this. I'm working with Lanaquero which I have pretty good success when I need to, to lift off and now as I peel the tape away, you can see this left me with a nice clean edge and I have that mask showing now. And originally I, I should have masked that at the beginning. And here where I've lifted off the masking fluid, I can go back and uh, there was a nice bright reflection into the water here, of this kind of rust tone. So by masking that, I was able to come back in and put in that bright tone on top of the, in, in the area where I'd have been painting. And now I'm taking some of these warm tones and just laying them in uh, the reflections. They're, they're, some of them are very subtle and not as bright as the one where I preserve the white of the paper. So just taking kind of a warm, neutral tone give any indication of some of these reflections. I've dried my paper and I'm coming back here and I'm just putting a, a, a neutral violet tone uh, just a light middle value down this uh, mask shape that I that I lifted off and I've left a light edge on the left of it. Now I've reached a point here where I can put a white mat on to get a good look at this. And that's my painting Dockside. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little different than what I normally do. Uh, if you want the reference material, you can go to the Online Learning Center and click the link at the top for YouTube reference. If you have questions about my materials, you can go to the studio page on my website, rsorwardsart.com. And if you have questions, you can email me at contactrsorwardsart at gmail.com. 
Thanks for watching.